Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, if you've ever seen 2001, you'll know that their vision of the future was, well, a little optimistic. They had magnificent space stations in low Earth orbit and shuttles that would go all the way to the moon. But recently, an organization calling itself the Gateway Foundation has been putting out some great videos showing their vision of a giant wheel-like station rotating in orbit. They've been selling the idea about the possibilities for tourism, for science, for part of a giant you know, space infrastructure that we all want to live in. But I'm not really convinced, to be clear. So yeah, the Gateway Foundation, not to be confused with the Gateway Foundation drug rehab facilities. This is the Gateway Foundation for building the big Von Braun space station in low Earth orbit. Uh, now, obviously, they're calling it the Von Braun station. Von Braun originally presented this idea back in the 1950s in his Disney uh, you know, show, showing how he envisioned the future of going to space. It had this giant wheel and it had shuttles. It would take hundreds of flights to build this. But you know, hey, I would have wanted that. Uh, the Gateway Foundation is also related to another group called uh, Orbital Assembly. I say it's another group, it's actually the same staff with the same website, but one, Orbital Assembly is all about developing the technology to build stuff in low Earth orbit, whereas Gateway Foundation is all about selling the idea of this big station in low Earth orbit and potentially beyond. So anyway, their vision of a space station would take hundreds of launches. It would be 488 meters across with a 78 meter wide hull. It would have a crew of 150 and be able to accommodate 1250 guests around the rim and in the core. They would use inflatable modules. They talk about the design, how they've changed the structure, the truss design, the assembly system. Oh, this is very interesting. Uh, uh, oh, for comparison though, the National Space Society also has a goal of a spinning station as one of their milestones. Theirs is much more modest, 100 meters across. And the National Space Society, uh, they've been around a lot longer. Now, um, what else? They have on their page, they talk about needing 56 megawatts of power. Well, I don't see any power source here. They say solar power. Well, if you try to figure out what kind of area you need for that, I think it's comparable to the size of the station. So none of their renders show the power. Also, none of their renders show how they manage the heat, the thermal control. But they do have an engineer that specializes in thermal control. The space station, in addition to its giant area of solar panels, which extend out way beyond the core of the station, also has uh, radiators that sit underneath. These are edge on to the sun so that they can get rid of the heat that's produced. Getting rid of heat is a critically important thing for spacecraft and especially in low Earth orbit when you've got the Sun, the Earth, very large range of thermal conditions you have to deal with. So this is barely a sketch and while I do believe these people might you are know, definitely interested in doing this, they're certainly a long way from having a finished design and nor would you expect them to have a finished design at this point. Their video also shows that every crew section on the output side would have an escape vehicle, which is important, you know, if you don't want to be stuck on a space station when something's going wrong. I'm not convinced by the current design, but they could change it. They show these little uh, dream chasers hanging, pointing outwards, which is very cool. You know, you just pull, push the button when you're loaded up and it drops away. Uh, except, how do you get into that? Like, you're going to have the seats facing forward, so they're going to have to figure out how to climb into this and then transition to these seats facing forward. Why not just have capsules that hang down? I mean, I get that with, you know, wing designs, it does mean that you could have much greater cross range and you can target like airfields and things like that to land. But on the other hand, capsules don't even need airfields. They can just land wherever is necessary. But look, the truth is there's just simply not enough technical detail to do any real hard analysis of this. And nor would we necessarily expect the technical detail at this point. But what does worry me is the funding mechanism. Last year, but in April, they tried to do a Kickstarter to raise $50,000 to make a high quality video about their orbital construction drones. And on their subreddit, they misspelled Kickstarter. That might explain. But yeah, the stretch goal 
included, if they reach 500,000, that would be to build one of these prototypes. And then if they got above 750K, they would launch, they would try to make one that they could put into space. This wasn't one of their fancy robots that would actually have manipulators or stuff. This was just the observer, which would have a camera that would you know, be able to look over the astronaut's shoulder and offer the support. Because, you know, a big part of this orbital construction is not doing it with astronauts. It's doing it with drones and telepresence so that you don't have to spend all this money having people in space all the time so that you can ultimately put people in space all the time. Okay, you know, let, let's not worry about that. But but the big selling thing, right? The, the Kickstarter didn't work. It failed. It got only 10K. I'm not going to go too deep into that. But they talk about this lottery concept. And it does seem so seductive that, yes, lotteries raise billions of dollars all around the world. The problem is that lotteries are actually illegal in, uh, the, in the US. Like, there's... They're supposed to be only run by the government. So if you try to have a competition where you require a purchase of something like a ticket or even like a, a consideration is how it's written. So that perhaps, you know, you you have people sign up for your web service and you want to offer a prize. That's not actually legal. You have to, in that case, you have to have a, a way for people that didn't give you what you wanted to be part of it. So their site that says, oh yeah, we'll, you know, we'll give a chance to get to the space station if you sign up. Right now, it's not clear that they can legally do that. But to be fair, a lot of, you know, you get raffles and stuff at schools and they generally don't attract a lot of attention. So it's fine. But when you're talking about raising $70 billion over decades, at some point that is going to get scrutinized. Now, they do actually say in one of their videos that they would need to get the law changed. Uh, and they talk about the initiatives process. This is where, you know, an interested group of people say, we would like this thing to be in the law. And if they get a certain number of signatures, it goes on the ballot and then it gets uh, signed into law if it gets voted in. And California is one of these states that does this, sometimes for the worse. Uh, we've had several bad laws that have been passed this way. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they've kind of skipped over the fact that they would have to put this to the vote to get it into the law books so they could start their lottery. And then that assumes that people actually want to play the lottery and all that. I'm I'm really, really worried about this. Now, it's good that they are looking at this kind of thing. I think that there are other organizations that are also looking at this particular problem of building a, uh, a station, but their uh, timelines are a lot less aggressive and they're, they're, they're working on other stepping stones first. So I would be a little wary of this. I would be very wary of this, but um, that doesn't automatically mean that it's a scam. It doesn't mean that, it, that these people are being malicious. It just means that perhaps they haven't really, they didn't really understand the law before they got to this. Or, you know, they're, they, they've got their big future and they want their big future and that's okay to get excited about that. And, you know, I hope they do find some like-minded billionaires that throw enough money at them for to fly to space. And then they can laugh at me and say, hi, hey, you're not getting on. You're skeptic. That would be a fantastic outcome as far as I'm concerned. I'm, I'm all for the giant big space station in space. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>